Welcome to Lockdown Knockout Live. I'm Karen Bashir, and it's time for the grand final of the Recurve event in this lockdown tournament. A very small team of people have brought in bags of technology to bring you this competition with archers shooting from their very own homes. Uh, this amazing tournament seen four men on one side of the draw and four women on the other side of the draw. And today we're going to find out who's going to be the inaugural winner of the Recurve tournament. Before we meet the athletes who are taking part in today's final, it's time to meet my expert commentator. Uh, some say if he was a fine wine, he would be Kruger Champagne. Some say if he was a luxury car, he'd be a continental Bentley. And some say if he was a precious stone, he'd be a 24 carat diamond. Instead, he's a commentator and he is World Archery's Chris Wells. Good afternoon, Chris. Uh, listen, it's been a fantastic tournament. Uh, you, the World Archery's introduced the uh, 12 ring for this competition, but the two finalists today haven't gone for it yet. Yeah, well, there's a couple of things to say about the 12 ring. First off, it's very, very small, only 15 millimeters, and it's not easy to hit over 18 meters. If you if you think about it, it's like hitting a, a 5p if you're English, or I don't know, a 10 cent if you're European, a, a dime if you're from the US. At, at 18 meters, it's a really, really difficult thing to hit, and it's not in the center of that circle. And what's more, it's it's about strategy, and, and some part of strategy is is not going for something, is when the risk doesn't doesn't require it, not overstretching yourself and going for it, and, that, and that's what it's really. I was talking about the target, Karim. I, I believe on Friday you asked if you could have one. Is that right? Oh, I, I, I really want one for my office. I, I think it's, uh, you know, it's a unique thing. Well, I noticed you have that hook on your uh, on your wall, so I framed one up for you, mate. There you go. <laughs> Amazing. And I'm, and I'm going to give it to you right now. There you go. Uh, that is incredible. Christopher Wells, thank you very much indeed. Look, I'm going to go and hang it up, but uh, I think the audience will probably want to, you know, not just watch me hanging this up. So I'm going to ask you my next question. Crispin against Aida today. Um, your thoughts on the match? Well, yeah, absolutely. Crispin shot this fantastic first match uh, against Bernardo Oliveira. Nothing but tens. He was great in the semi-finals as well against Steve Weiler. Came down to the last hour of the match, and Steve just uh, Steve just couldn't quite hit the ten and extend it to a shoot off. And, and Crispin edged ahead. Aida too, though, was fantastic in her first two matches. Uh, didn't quite average as much as Crispin in qualification, but but delivered fantastically in both to take the second one in six uh, six points to nil. Both of them have the tools to to win this uh, this final, this first final, and take home. The 1,000 Swiss francs. Do you need a hand, mate? Are you struggling? What's going I, on? I, I, I am. I've had, I'm having a real, a real problem here. Um, look, you, you talked about the 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 uh, the Viola match. That was a, a very interesting one. Uh, Steve hit it for the first time. He hit it twice in the match, but uh, his opponent Brady got the first ever 32. I'm going to have another go at hanging this up if you don't mind. Yeah, absolutely. Well, oh, so that was the, the quarterfinal between Steve Weiler and Brady Ellison. Um, uh, Steve shot 32, shot two, two times the 12 to, to hit that and then extend it and take the match. Um, in the in the quarter, in the semifinal, Steve against Crispin. Uh, Steve went for the 12, didn't get it. Crispin also chose not to go for the 12. Uh, he implemented his strategy that he decided before the match started, didn't go for the 12 in a clear opportunity to go so. And when it looked like he was going to lose, he didn't. He, he stayed the course, went the whole way, and it came down to that last hour. Congratulations. Well done. I'm, I'm proud of you more than anything. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's not quite straight. I'll, I'll fix that uh, when I'm not on or in vision. Um, look, uh, it has been a fantastic match, a uh, fantastic competition, uh, but it is time for the final. And I think it's time that we meet the athletes taking part today. Uh, look, our first athletes on the women's side of the draw, uh, she came through Yasmin Anagosh uh, from Turkey in the quarterfinals and uh, then went on to beat her former Olympic teammate, Gabby Bayardo, in straight sets in the semifinals. It is Mexico's 2012 Olympic silver medalist, Ida Roman. Hello, Ida. How are you? Uh, look, you're, you seem to be back in the same place as you were for the, the semi-finals. 
yeah, it's, it's the same place in the semifinals. We decided that it was nice to shoot in the semifinal here. No problems with the connection, so I go back here. And and how are you feeling about today's final? It's exciting because, I mean, in none of competition, uh, we ever shoot against guys. So it's going to be cool to shoot against them. And, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. And uh, I think Crispin is one of the greatest archers in the world. So it's going to be a tough match. You were the uh, 2014 World Indoor Champion. Uh, are you hoping and expecting to add the lockdown knockout title today? Yeah, this is Archer. You know, you never know what is going to happen. So I'm going to do my best and I hope everything can be in my side. <laughs> Well, good luck to you for today's final. Uh, yeah. We're going to let you go and get ready. But uh, Ida gave us a little tour of where she's shooting today. Let's take a look at it. Let me show you where is the place that I'm going to shoot this final. This is the target. This is the little field. And here I am ready to shoot this competition. Bye. Great to have a look behind the scenes. Uh, but let's introduce the second uh, finalist today for the Recurve Lockdown Knockout Live final. Uh, well, he's the Canadian who made it through the men's side of the draw. He beat Bernardo Oliveira in the quarterfinals, never missing the 10 ring, going on to beat Steve Weiler in a five set thriller in the semifinals. It's three time Olympian, Crispin Duenas. <laughs> Hey, Crispin. Uh, good to see you again. Um, look, you're shooting again in that fantastic range there. What's the setup like? And are you feeling confident? Crispin, just, just, just one one second i don't know whether you can hear me we can't quite pick up your sound have you have you have you muted yourself still can't quite hear you i think we can hear you from down at the microphone at the uh at the target how about this i think maybe if you take your head headphones off maybe are. It's a little bit better, but we haven't quite got perfect sound. Hey Crispin, why don't you could run you, down to the target end for the for the moment, and then we'll uh, and then we'll sort this out in a second. Can you guys hear me now? Ah, oh. oh, yes, yes, we got you, we got you. <laughs> Stay okay. where you are. <laughs> uh, look, Crispin, I said uh, you're in that fantastic range today. Uh, are you feeling confident about the final? Yeah, I'm actually feeling really happy that I get to shoot against Aida. Like she said, uh, we've never shot against each other. And um, it's really exciting to be able to do that. And the range that I'm shooting on right now is still closed. Um, as many people have noticed, there's nobody else here. And that was kind of done by, uh, by purpose because we're still making sure that all of the opening procedures are going to be good for when we finally reopen this range to all the members um, after the COVID lockdown. Yeah, it, uh, but it, it is a fantastic range that you're at at the moment. And uh, we've got great connections, a little bit of an issue with the sound, but it seems to be working OK <laughs> now. Uh, look, you told us uh, before about your strategy with this 12 point ring, uh, only really going to go for it if you absolutely need it. Is that going to be the same today? Absolutely. Um, in my opinion, it's worked up until now, so there's no reason to change my strategy for this match. Well, look, good luck to you. Uh, we'll let you go and get ready. Crispin also gave us a, a little tour of where he's shooting. It's a fantastic range. Let's take a quick look at that. 
Just wanted to show you my range. I'm at the Peel Archery Club. It's in Brampton, Ontario. It's uh, about half an hour outside of Toronto. And here we are indoors. So as you can see, uh, this used to be a warehouse or a factory of some sort, but we've got 70 meters indoors all the way back there. And here's where I'm shooting the lockdown challenge on the shooting line here with my camera posted here and 18 meters in the middle of your screen there. And this is the only 24 hour members only access indoor 70 meter range in the Toronto area. But for now, I am just shooting 18 meters right here for the lockdown challenge. Pretty cool, eh? Very cool. Very, very cool indeed. I love the way the lights went off on the 70 meter target as well uh, to bring that uh, 18 meter target into view more clearly. Uh, before we get to the action, let's have a quick look at how we got to this stage of the competition. This is the draw. And as you can see, uh, Crispin came through Steve Vaya to make the final, Ida beating Gabby Bayardo uh, to make this final. The rules for the competition, they're shooting over 18 meters as they have done throughout the tournament. It's a set system in recurve archery, three arrows per archer per set. If you win a set, you get two set points. If the scores are tied, each archer gets a single point and the title will be won by the first archer to reach six points. The targets, well, uh, we haven't seen this apart from in Casey Calfold's case, the vertical. We've seen this triangular formation. The target is made up of uh, ever decreasing circles going into that four centimeter 10 ring. But as we've said, the 12 pointer is up for grabs, but the archers have to let us know if they're going to go for it. Uh, Crispin, in the first version of the lockdown knockout, a compound competition was run by Sarah Lopez. Are you a bit nervous that you're going to get uh, upset here by Aida? <laughs> well, uh, she's a really good shot. We've got a silver from the Olympics under her belt. I've, I don't have that. So I know that this is going to be a great match against Aida. I don't want to count my chickens yet, but it's going to be a really, really good match. And I'm really excited to shoot against her. She's just an awesome shooter. Obviously, you're coming into this as the top seed. Aida, the underdog here. Um, what are your nerves like? I don't know. It's kind of something new. And when something is new, it's like interesting and also nervous. I don't know. It's kind of cool, those feelings. And let's do our best. Well, every archer throughout the compound competition and the recurve competition who's had the choice to shoot first has always chosen to shoot first. Crispin shot the highest in qualification in this recurve tournament. So Crispin, are you going to stick with the game plan and go and shoot first? You know it. <laughs> there we go. So Crispin will start uh, our final today. It's time to start the match. So Crispin, just outside Toronto in Canada, will begin our recurve final. Aida just going right into the nine ring. Well, he's been shooting 10s throughout the tournament. I think he's only missed the 10 ring once in two matches. Another one to the right. So 18 so far for Ida. That could be a nine, but I think that's going to be enough. He's put it out of reach. But, I'm going to uh, go for the dodge. And Ida normally would be out of reach, but she's going for the 12 pointer here. First time for her. I 
think she's got it. That's a fantastic shot. And normally she would have been out of reach, but I think she's hit the 12 pointer. That gives her 30 points. And I think Crispin's last arrow is in the nine ring. Uh, Christopher Wellington Wells, uh, what do you say? What a fantastic shot from Ida to finish that off. Um, my breath was, well, I was holding my breath while she while she held her back. She was slow at full draw, but, but fantastic delivery. Definitely hit the 12 ring there. Uh, Crispin's arrow is in that exact worst spot to try and spot from, from this angle. I can't call whether that's a nine or a 10. But to be honest, if I had to put some money on it, I'd take a nine here. I think he's down at the target already. Well, let's yes, uh, see if he is still. Crispin, uh, could you give us your scores? And uh, we we can see the two tens in the bottom two targets. Is it a nine or a yep. ten in the top one? It's actually a ten. It just clipped, and I can move the camera over if you would like to see. You do not have to do that. We trust you implicitly. So it is a thirty for Crispin. Uh, Ida, can you confirm that uh, it's two nines and a twelve? I have nine, nine, twelve. So both archers have shot a 30 in the first set. Ida had to go for the 12 to get it, but it's all square and it's one set point each after the first set. Uh, Chris, uh, what a start to the final. Very weird to say both archers have shot a 30 when one's put two in the nine, but fantastic recovery from Aida. And that's how that, that 12 ring should be used best. You know, she had no chance of coming into that set uh, using normal scoring, uh, but needed to go for the 12 and absolutely delivered a monster. Fantastic shot. And you mentioned before, uh, Chris, that uh, in a previous match, that if you, if you hit that uh, 12 point, it, it gives you something to aim at. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to aim um, on a clean target face, very Plus difficult. It. I mean, it's, it's more difficult to aim on a clean target face than one that's had holes in it because the kind of the big black hole that gets um, that gets built up with the, the back of the boss getting darker, it's much easier to aim at than, than a clean target face. So she started to do that. She started to put a hole in that white spot and she will find it easier to aim at next time. Well, interesting stuff. Uh, we've had our first set. Both archers have shot different kinds of 30s but all square at one set point each so we will go to the second set well crispin will shoot first uh, as he did in the first set with the scores all tied Maintaining his tens. And that's hit the nine ten ring, so that will score a ten as well. Longer hold from Crispin, but it's another 10. Now it looks to me like Ida's fixed the problems of shooting right early on in the first set. Found the middle of the target. It's another perfect 30 from Crispin Duenas from Canada. We go back to Mexico. Is Ida thinking about the 12 again? I think maybe she was thinking about that 12 and she shot an eight to score a 28. 
So for me, Crispin gets the set points and leads by three set points to one. Uh, Chris, uh, interesting last arrows from both the archers, a long hold from Crispin. And then I think there was a little bit of a question about whether to go for the 12. Well, Crispin's last arrow was fantastic, right down the middle. But no, with Aida, she needed that ten on the on the standard scoring to tie the match. And an archery is all about all a mental game, you know. It all happens in the head before you draw the bow. And one of the most difficult things is knowing that you've got to hit the middle to to, to win the match or or tie the match, especially when you're on that that standard circle. Because as soon as you let that kind of one thought come in, I can't miss the middle, then it all starts to become much more difficult. She shot fantastic arrows with her first two. That third one, she wasn't happy with it. Wasn't comfortable, and it's gone high. In the, in the eight and given Crisp in this second set. Well, uh, Ida, we're going to come to you first. Uh, look, we can see that you've got two tens in the bottom two targets uh, and that looks to me like an eight in the top target. Yeah, it is. It's 10, 10, eight. So a 28 for Ida Roman. Crispin, um, another perfect 30, I think. Yep, uh, 10, 10, 10 for this end. A 10, 10, 10. So Crispin leads by three set points to one. We'll let the archers retrieve their arrows and go back to the shooting line. Uh, Chris, do, do you think that Ida was thinking about that 12? No, I don't think so. Um, in, in that situation, she needed the 10. She's been shooting 10s to tie the tie the set and, and get the set points and show. That's a much safer bet. And I think she just took her time on that and didn't quite deliver uh, what she needed to to, to take that uh, match, uh, that, that that set in, in this in this match. Aida, well, what happened on the, your last arrow of that set? Yeah, too much effort, so I need to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too nervy excited. moments. Yeah, nervy moments for both of the archers here. Uh, but uh, Crispin leads by three set points to one after two sets. It's time for set number three. So for the first time in the match, it will be Ida shooting first. She's trading by three set points to one. Into the nine. Now just adjusting her sight there as well. Well, I'm sounding like a stuck record here. It's another 10 for Crispin. So the adjustment was just slightly too far and it's in the nine on the other side. Yeah. I'm going for the dot. So another 9-9 nine, nine and another call from Ida to go for the 12. And that's dropped into the 7 this time. So it's a 25 for Ida. Uh, 6 will be enough for Crispin to take this third set. Another long hold. I think that's drifted into the nine this time. Uh, very much like the first set. I think that's a 29 for Crispin, but it's enough to take the set points in the third. Uh, Chris, uh, we've seen a couple of very long holds from Crispin. Uh, why, why on earth would uh, that be happening, especially indoors? 
Well, actually, you see, you see with Crispin, when he starts off a match, he tends to be much faster. And, and as the match progresses, he holds for longer and longer. Um, archery is all about rhythm and, and managing pressure and, and, and all this kind of thing. Um, the pressure at the match is, is you know, you're, you're, in, you're in the zone. You can go a bit faster. As the pressure builds up, you tend to tighten up and you tend to not be as smooth in your, in your kind of motion and your technique. And you see that in Crispin as he shoots, but he's still shooting fantastically well. Ma managing that, knowing that it's going to happen is part of the, uh, part of the game here. Yeah, it certainly is. And I think that may be just his second drop point in uh, the whole tournament. But we're going to go to Ida first. Ida, uh, a 997, I think, for you. Yeah, it is. 997. So a 25 for Ida. And uh, Crispin, uh, what about you? Is that a 9, that final arrow? No, I'm, I'm getting all the luck today. And that just clipped half the width of the line. So it's a 10. Another really lucky though. Congrat Chris, Chris congratulations. Nailed it on that. <laughs> <laughs> very, very good stuff from Crispin Duane as he's taken the third set, leads by five set points to one. Uh, Chris, two lucky arrows from uh, Crispin, uh, just clipping the line. The, the, the luckier you get, right? I mean, he's done a fantastic job. Only 10 so far in this match. Shame as that first match. But this this whole contest would have been very different had Aida not hit that 12 in the first set. Uh, Crispin would have already won this. Um, she's given herself an opportunity, extended it, had to go for the 12 on that on that last arrow. And actually, you saw her twist her sight just before she saw and it. And it went a little low. It went right as well. So it probably wouldn't have hit had she twisted her sight or not. But it's these little, little adjustments that make the difference in archery. Yeah, it really is. Well, Crispin leads by five set points to one. So Ida needs to take this set. Uh, Crispin can win with a draw. Let's go to set number four. So as always in archery, the trailing archer will shoot first. So we are in Mexico with Ida Roman. She needs to get off to a good start here. Having to reset. Oh, brilliant shot. Just what she needed to put some pressure on the Canadian finalist. I want to say nine at some point for Crispin, not not because I don't want him to win, but just because he just keeps making me say 10. That's in the nine ring for Ida, so a 19. Go for it. Another ten for Crispin. That is the eleventh ten in a row. And Ida, are you going for it? I'm going for the small dot. So 50-50 so far, she's hit it once, missed it once. It's a third chance for Ida to go for the 12. She's gone left. I think that's probably going to be an eight. So a 27. So an, a seven will be enough for Crispin to take the grand final of the recurve at Lockdown Knockout Live. It's another 10 for Crispin Duenas. Four perfect 30s for him. And he takes this final seven set points to one. 
subject to a confirmation but i think we can all see crispin's target on the right hand side showing all the arrows inside the 10 ring uh, ida had to go for the 12 on her final arrow missed it by what a couple of centimeters in that top ring uh so crispin we will come to you first to uh, confirm your scores yeah i have 10 10 10. uh a perfect set of results for crispin duenas with a 30 and uh, ida could you confirm uh, your scores as well please yes 10, eight. 10 9 8 so a 27 crispin is the champion of recurve a lockdown knockout live uh crispin we're going to come to you first uh, could you possibly move your camera and get yourself in shot there you are uh crispin <laughs> How do you feel about winning this tournament? I'm I'm super happy. Um, I mean, it's been uh, a long time since I've done competition and felt this kind of pressure. Uh, Chris noted that I was getting slower, and that's something that I've been working on. And luckily, um, I was able to pull it back in the fourth set and uh, still shoot a, a comfortable 30. And uh, I'm happy. I mean... Congratulations to Ida for, for really great shooting in this final. Um, I mean, it, what better person to shoot this final against? She's Mexico's like top archer for the longest time running. I remember we were at the Pan Am Games in 2007 together, so I know that she's been around for a long time just like me. Um, just really good shooting from her, and uh, congratulations to her. And uh, can I just ask you about uh, that uh, third arrow in the first set from Ida going for the 12 and leveling up on scores with you? Did that throw you a bit? Uh, no, um, I actually expected that she would go for it and I predicted that she would probably hit it. She's, a like I said, she's a really good archer. So uh, for her to hit the 12 was actually something that was... I, I, I expected it from her, so not a surprise at all. Well, congratulations to you. Crispin, can I ask you to return to your shooting line? Uh, Chris is going to have some questions for you uh, a, a little bit later, uh, but we'll go back to Mexico. Ida, uh, wow, I'm so impressed with your uh, attempt and your bravery to go for that 12 in the first set. You just drop yourself down so we can see your face. There you are. Uh, was it a quick decision? Was it an easy decision to go for the 12? Yeah, of yeah, course. Of course. Everybody wants to win and everyone wants to make their best. And I think it's, it was a, a, a great uh, challenge for all the archers that, that we were. The first try was kind of like it's the, the tough ring, but it's, it's pretty cool to, to have this kind of competition. And uh, how did you feel about, uh, well, you took it into four sets uh, against Crispin. Uh, how do you feel about being involved in the final? I feel fine. I feel like a nice in, in my match. Uh, but it's, you know, sometimes this is archery. It's, you are in and the other day, maybe you are not exactly super precise. So it's, uh, I did my best and hit 112 that I just wanted to do that. <laughs> and it's pretty cool to, to, to yeah, hit that. Well, con congratulations to you. You are the first woman to hit the uh, 12 ring in this competition and ever. So uh, congratulations to you. Can I ask you also to return to your <laughs> shooting line for uh, our, our, our closing piece? Uh, but what an incredible match. Crispin Duenas is the champion of uh, the recurve and lockdown knockout, Chris. Uh, right, a uh, million questions. Let's start with the first one. Uh, Ida going for the 12 to score a 30 and match Crispin, who's only dropped one point in the whole tournament. Discuss. 
Yeah, fantastic. Fantastic shot. She did it really well. She deserves it. I mean, that's not an easy thing to hear. And she deserves to get some of those set points. I really thought that arrow in the fourth set was going to hit as well because she yeah. looked great. She looked confident. She came down when, you know, probably because you were talking still, but I'm not, I'm not really sure. And then she delivered something really, really good. And it just went left. She she probably wasn't on the um, uh, right where she needs to be aiming and it, and it just drifted off. But I, I really thought that was going in as well. But you couldn't ask for a more deserving winner. I mean, he's only dropped one point in match play on the Ten ring. He didn't need to go for the 12 at all. Fantastic shooting in any kind of tournament. So Crispin it really, really deserves to take gold in this. He certainly does. And uh, we did uh, have a chat with the guys before the competition and Crispin went for the 12 uh, just once whilst we were watching and he hit it. So uh, it's it's undoubted that he can hit it. Uh, your final thoughts on uh, on uh, the, the, the end of the match itself as well, because that seemed to be quite, you know, it was obviously crucial and deciding. Yeah, th there was a kind of a bit of a power struggle there. You saw Crispin kind of slow down over the last couple of sets. Like you said, tensing up, not quite smooth. There was an opportunity for Ada to break that, but she just needed that little burst. If she'd hit that 12 in the fourth, you know, things would have been 5-3. Could she have gone the whole way? Who knows? We'll never know because it's over now and Crispin has been crowned our winner. <laughs> He certainly has. Uh, so let's have a quick look at uh, how this recurve lockdown knockout uh, competition finished. Here is uh, the the situation. Uh, we came through eight archers and Crispin Duenas has taken the final seven points to one. Congratulations to him. Aida, what can you say about Crispin? A very deserving winner of this tournament, don't you think? Huge congrats. You deserve it. Oh my, you hit like <laughs> insane. So good job. And I think it's, it's nice to see high level in the middle of this quarantine that in this side of the world, the things are going a little bit slow that nobody can shoot in their places or in, just in the house. And it's, it's brilliant and it's really cool to see uh, Crispin doing his best and just dropping one point or <laughs> in all the competitions. So it's pretty cool. Congratulations and well done. Uh, Crispin, Thank yeah, you, you shot, shot top qualification. You only dropped one point. You must be very proud of how you shot uh, in this in this unique tournament. Yeah, I was really happy to be named to the four men selected in the world to, to do this. So, um, I mean, once I learned that I was going to be doing this, a little bit more focus went back into 18 meters. Um, and I'm very, very happy with how I shot. I'm very impressed with how Aida shot. Uh, her last match against G Gabby was 29-30-29. And I mean, that's, that's amazing shooting with normal scoring. And uh, to be able to shoot a 12 in our match was just uh, <laughs> no words. It's amazing. It was really good shooting. I didn't even go for the 12 in my matches. So, um, I mean, I, I don't even know the type of pressure she must have felt when she was going for that 12. So really good shooting from Aida. Well, listen, guys, it's been absolutely incredible. Ida, thank you so much for your involvement. It's been an absolute privilege to watch you shooting uh, the first woman to hit a 12 you have made history today congratulations to you uh crispin, thank you so much. What, my absolute pleasure crispin uh you've been stunning to watch just dropping the single point you are the champion of the recurve lockdown knockout live well done mate brilliant shooting uh and thank you to thank you, you for very being much. involved uh, and chris and uh, I, I as always happy father's day to everybody i do have to say that happy father's day to my dad, to my um, my father-in-law, and to all dads around the world. Uh, hopefully, uh, yeah. Happy everybody That's around them is doing something good. <laughs> well, what a brilliant way to, to finish this. Uh, happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, Chris. So in some ways, I see you as my my father in this whole uh, shebang that we're doing. Uh, but well, brilliant well stuff from you. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you to you and thank you to everyone at World Archery for setting up this competition. It's been unbelievable. And thanks also to our production team, uh, Mark and Scott. We couldn't have done this without you. You've been superb. Thanks to all of you. We hope to see you all on the shooting line for real sometime soon. But for now, bye.